All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lin. I'm a senior honors thesis uh, student here, uh, computer science major, of course. And today I'll be talking about my uh, research over the past uh, two semesters on the evaluation of the performance and cost of cloud-based motion planning. Um, so before I begin on uh, my work, I'm just do a brief introduction on uh, what robot motion planning is. And so this uh, robot motion planning is the um, task of uh, moving a robot in its configuration space from a start configuration to an end configuration while um, checking for obstacle avoidance and also uh, self-collision avoidance. And so the, the goal is to manipulate, um, rotate, transform, or uh, move robots' joints um, within this uh, free passageway in order to get from its start um, or its current configuration to an, a goal state. And so this video shows kind of what it looks like in uh, one of the scenarios, if I can get it to play. So here we have a fetch robot. Um, let's see if it plays. Hmm. All right, so I guess I'll just narrate what it would look like if it ran. <laughs> so what happens here is we have uh, one of the students in our lab wave a baton in the, the path of uh, the fetch robot. And the fetch robot is uh, planning a, a, a kind of real time responding to this dynamically moving obstacle, sensing where it is, and then trying to reach this pre-grasping configuration at, the, uh, at that Pepsi bottle on the right uh, hand corner. Not going to work. But anyways, moving on. Um, so kind of with that demonstration uh, comes the problem of uh, motion planning in the real world. Um, in the real world, not, uh, we not only have static obstacles like the table, um, but we also have moving um, objects such as this baton. Um, we also have I work with robots that have high degrees of freedom um, and, and also work in areas with um, narrow passageways. And so this exponentially de uh, increases the uh, dimensionality and the difficulty of these motion plane problems. And so uh, one of the uh, solutions to this task is inviting um, cloud computation into the picture using the powerful processing power and energy that um, cloud processors have um, simply with connection through the internet utilizing this uh, compute power to help plan um, these uh, motion planning problems. And so a um, kind of simple picture of what cloud-based motion planning is, is that with the kind of limited compute power of a robot, but it's low latency, this robot is kind of equipped to uh, uh, do kind of local planning and also um, joint actuation. Um, so utilizing the um, optimalities of this processor to do um, the, the onboarding processor to do tasks that are um, best suited for its uh, capabilities and then using the massive compute power but higher latency in the cloud um, to plan at the actual uh, robust and complex uh, roadmaps for this robot to actually execute. And so one of the other problems that this invites is that with the use of a cloud service we uh, have this uh, question of economic cost and also this optimality of kind of the financial uh, costs that are associated with using this server uh, compute a cloud compute service and so we have to uh, kind of consider server costs and also kind of the quality of the plan and also the compute time that is associated with the specific server uh, compute server package that you use and so this is really based on um, prior work done by one of the researchers in the robotics lab um, where he, uh, the student proposes a um, robot based motion planning method that split, splits um, this computation between the cloud and the local robot, um, having the robot really do the uh, dynamic, the uh, real time reaction to dynamic obstacles and also sending, but then sending uh, plan requests to the uh, server for information on how to actually reach the f 
the uh, targeted target space from its kind of target uh, configuration from its current uh, configuration. And so doing the uh, uh, actual roadmap, constructing the roadmap with the uh, cloud's computation. And so we'll see if this runs this time. I uh, guess not. Oh. Yep, and so you see the feed over here. This is a uh, sim scenario that we've constructed for the fetch where it is trying to reach a pre-grasp configuration. Uh, and so here we have a baton that's actively uh, opposing the movement of the robot's joint, uh, arm. And so he here the, uh, the planning, the reaction to the movements of the uh, baton are done on the local ser uh, local processor, but the actual kind of a bigger roadmap is sent, uh, received from this cloud. And so kind of the question that we investigate is how much would this cost? And so the uh, variables that go into it include uh, the total server usage, the time that elapsed to reach the goal, which encompasses and is related to the size of the graph, and also the network time that's associated with this cloud and robot relationship, and also additional operating costs. Um, and so we evaluate these uh, method, this uh, cloud computation method um, with the Amazon Web Service EC2 uh, Compute Optimized C4 instance, their latest um, instance. Um, this is a pay-per-use package that we use. Um, it uses Intel Xeon uh, E5 2666 V3 Haswell processors. Um, we specifically run our experiments on two of the instances, the C4-4X large and the C4-8X large, which respectively have 16 vCPU and 36 vCPU. Here, um, Amazon uses this concept of virtualized CPU, which, uh, because these instances are hyper-threaded, it corresponds to uh, two vCPUs correspond to one core. And so the kind of the analog would be the C4-4X large has eight cores, whereas the C4-8X large is more equivalent to um, an 18 core processor. And so we also value it across different uh, server regions. And so um, starting from the closest to our location here in Chapel Hill, we have uh, US East, North Virginia, and then Ohio, and then North Carol California, Oregon, uh, Ireland. And then we also wanted to kind of see a really bad case, so we tested it in Mumbai as well. And each of the costs has pulled from recently in April um, for the two uh, instances are shown here. And so these are kind of do not change too much from day to day, but they, um, the difference between these centers also play a role in kind of choosing uh, the balance between which instance and kind of balancing for the, the uh, latency that is a result from a further distance and kind of seeing what cost kind of uh, balance you want to create. And so our uh, simulations done in this uh, thesis uh, were run on uh, a simulation. And so instead of uh, actually um, running these physical trials, we wanted to kind of have a more controlled uh, experiment. And so we simulated a uniformly sleeping obstacle. And this uh, obstacle was not, is detected. And so uh, even though it's a uniform motion, uh, the robot does not know where it's going to be in the future, and so it's just, it is uh, at real time detecting where it is. Uh, we ran, ran 50 trials with a two minute timeout for each trial, uh, for each run. And so the results uh, briefly uh, shown up here. Uh, the uh, x axis is the data centers listed in order from closest data center to Chapel Hill to ranging them furthest. And kind of as um, predictions, uh, as we predicted, the, uh, evidently the time that it takes for the robot, uh, the motion planning process to reach from uh, its initial configuration to the goal state um, increases as the, uh, as the data center is further away. Um, you go to the next slide. However, also because uh, the distance increases the amount of latency that is associated with each pl uh, each uh, experiment or each uh, planning process um, increases, and so the amount that's dedicated for actually generating these gra these roadmaps decreases. And so, um, with that, the number of edges generated across the centers, as well as the number of vertices generated across the data centers, decreases. Um, if you look back into the first slide, how, uh, first graph, however, you'll see that 
from our experiments, actually, uh, the Ohio data center s took less time to reach its goal um, than the North Virginia center. And so this prompted another set of experiments to be run specifically between these two instances, but on a uh, lower powered processor. So the idea is that because these two locations are so close and that we're using um, the higher powered processor, um, the actual, uh, the fact that uh, these, they're given more time to actually look for uh, the roadmap uh, ends up contributing to the, this uh, denser roadmap that uh, the North Virginia Data Center receives. And so as a result, um, it takes more time to actually complete this task. Um, and so we ran uh, the additional trials on uh, 16 vCPU instance between the North Virginia and Ohio data centers. Um, we saw that um, it was able, uh, the uh, results were as we predicted, where the Ohio data center uh, took more time to reach, as well as, however, um, the roadmaps we got were actually, uh, were actually um, kind of a surprisingly uh, different than what we saw in the previous runs where uh, here actually the Ohio uh, data center generated more complex uh, roadmap, uh, roadmaps with, uh, with more edges and more vertices on uh, the graphs that it generated and sent. And so kind of looking first at the network time and looking at the 16 VCP, vCPU network time, kind of get an explanation as to why that occurred. Um, well, first uh, of all, 36 VCPU instances uh, kind of increased uh, in network time as the distance increased, as I mentioned earlier. But however, the Northern Virginia actually showed a longer uh, network time increase. Uh, and so it kind of uh, leads into this idea that there are so many other variables that need to be controlled for scenarios uh, such as network traffic and 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 uh, you know in the time of the day that we choose to run these uh, experiments and so this um, uh, there there's a lot of room for future work to be done um, to investigate kind of in more controlled settings what the actual kind of differences in valuations can be. Um, and uh, in terms of the cost comparisons, we also saw that um, the 3060 CPU, although uh, generated a cost increase for both of the instances, the actual complexity of the graph did not see that much of a substantial increase or maximization between these two servers. And, and so just in conclusion, kind of looking at this last graph, we see that because of these uh, nuances in terms of kind of balancing server power and also um, choosing kind of which processor and also considering the, the different complexities in terms of latencies and, and real world uh, uh, variables that come into play, um, there's a lot of, um, there is benefit to be, <laughs> to be uh, achieved through uh, using these uh, cloud servers in motion planning, but there comes to a point where we need to evaluate kind of where is it enough, um, how much uh, cloud service we want to utilize, and kind of further investigate where this balance and where this kind of crossing point should be um, when we kind of investigate and motivate cloud computation for robot motion planning problems. Thank you.